We are all familiar with the concept of a mirage. Most of us know that the mirage is an optical illusion that is created by conditions, externally and internally. For example, a lot of people will see the mirage of a pool of water on the highway miles ahead of where their car is, only to never quite reach that pool of water because it's not really there. Again, it's an optical illusion. But probably the most famous mirage is the mirage of an oasis in the middle of a desert. Of course, this mirage is caused by heat as well as delirium inside the human body because of the said heat. Well, in 2015, the Chinese government tried to convince its citizens that what they saw in the sky was nothing more than a mirage. However, most people in China, as well as the rest of the world, don't believe that to be true. So what was floating in the sky above China back in 2015? Well, that's the mystery. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Again, if you would like to help support the channel, we have a link to our Patreon down below. I also want to remind you as well that one of our members of this esoteric community has written a novel on multiverses. A link to his novel is down below as well as his email address if you know somebody in publishing that wants to help him out. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about the floating city. sure that what happened in China in 2015 was not a hallucination. We know this because thousands of people saw the same thing and videotaped the same thing in two different regions of China. We also know that a few days later, a whole other region of China saw the same floating city. You see, what they saw in the sky appeared to be a perfectly designed city floating on a cloud. You could see the details of the building structures, possible windows. And you see, here's the thing. This wasn't the first time this had happened in China. This also happened back in 2011 and then happened again on March 18th, 2016. To look at the video footage that people took of this event was pretty terrifying. It was a massive city that appeared to be floating above our Earth. In the videos, the homemade videos of the residents, you can hear people ooing and aahing and catching their breath because the sight was so unbelievable. Well, the Chinese government was very quick to tell the people of China and the world that this was only a mirage, an optical illusion, a trick of the eyes. However, most people absolutely do not believe this and feel like the Chinese government was hiding something from its population. Now, to be fair, the Chinese government isn't the only government in the world that has hidden stuff from its people. I mean, here in America, we have Roswell, a total cover up, right? And pretty soon after it happened, there were two big ideas roaming around the planet as to what this floating city could be. On this channel, we have spoken about parallel universes or multiverses. Well, a lot of people believed that's what this floating city was, that the walls were bleeding through between one reality, one dimension, and another dimension, and that's what the people were seeing. And because this happened in the 2010s leading up to the time we're in now in 2020, this seems rather appropriate. Right now, we know that we're going through a massive awakening in our planet. So the fact that 
the walls of, of other realms were starting to bleed through would make sense and that there was a temporary vortex into this other dimension. And that the sighting of this other city or multiple cities throughout the years wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but a sign of the good to come. However, the other hypothesis or theory on what was happening in China at this time is a little bit more sinister. You see, a lot of people believed that these floating cities were holograms created by what we now know to be Project Bluebeam. The concept of Project Bluebeam was first talked about and coined by the investigative journalist Sergei Monast from Quebec, Canada. Sergei spent his career studying the Masonic Orders and the coming of the New World Order. In fact, he constantly was warning people about this plan to bring about a one world government through NASA and the UN. Sergei founded the International Press Agency where he published most of his work and it was in 1994 that Sergei published the book Project Bluebeam. In this book he showed that his research showed that NASA working with the United Nations again to create this one world government would be created under the Antichrist. He claimed that with NASA's technology that NASA would create a hologram in the sky that would mimic the second coming of Six. Jesus. In this book he claimed that this particular group of Masons had been working on this world domination for about 20 years. Their plan to eventually take over the world through Project Bluebeam was going to come through mind control through the media. Now we've already talked about that a lot on this channel through Operation Mockingbird and MK Ultra Mind Control, which I will place down below. Now unfortunately, Sergei did not live to see his theories being proven correct as we know they are now. For most of the world, the people of the those of us who are waking up, who are not still deranged, we understand that MK Ultra Mind Control has been a part of our mockingbird media. That the mainstream media has been saying and doing things intentionally to try to dilute and control our minds. We understand that the mainstream media globally is a part of the New World Order, that it is a part of this Luciferian sect of our society with our global elite. However, a lot of people believe that now in 2020, Project Bluebeam will possibly be shown as an alien invasion, a holograph of aliens coming to Earth to terrorize the people more into accepting the leadership of a one world government. Of course, inherently a one world government is completely wrong because it strips us of our sovereignty. Not just our sovereignty as individual nations, but our sovereignty as individual people, especially here in the United States, because in our constitution, it states that we are a people that were born with certain unalienable rights given to us by God. The United States Constitution recognizes that there is a power stronger and bigger than the government that gives you life. Well, for a one world government, that will be stricken from the record. You will be disconnected from your right to be here by the creator. In other words, your individual life will not be seen as protected. Instead, you will be enslaved by the one world government. You will be working and living for them and serving them. So a lot of people in China as well as around the world believe that the cities in the sky, the floating cities from 2011, 2015, and 2016 were holograms created by NASA and the United Nations as almost like a practice run for this fake alien invasion. 
Now, back in the 1990s, many people, of course, thought that Sergei Monast was crazy. However, again, we now know he wasn't. And you see, not long after Sergei's second book was published on the Masonic Order of 666, Sergei Monast died very mysteriously. You see, the government in Canada had already tried to take his children away from him, had wrecked havoc on his life. So I ask you this, if he was just some crazy conspiracy theorist, why was the Canadian government so afraid of him? And in fact, Sergei Monast's life was so fascinating to some people that in 1997, a movie was made about him. This movie was actually called Conspiracy Theorist and it starred Mel Gibson playing the character of Sergei Monast, although he had a different name in the film. Now, I've seen a lot of memes going around the internet that say Mel Gibson has been trying to warn us about what's going on for a very long time and I definitely happen to agree. So what do you think? We obviously know that the floating cities most people do not believe they were a, mir a mirage as the government said they were. Do you think it was a vortex, a temporary vortex into a parallel universe or a multiverse? Or do you think it was a trial, a practice run of Project Bluebeam? Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you so much again for another fun Mystery Monday. Don't forget, tomorrow I will be back on David Zublik's channel. We're going to be looking into a deeper history of Jekyll Island. I will leave you with this to prepare you for tomorrow. Before there was Epstein Island, there was Jekyll Island. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. A link to, to purchase his song is coming soon. I am going to see him this week so I can get that link for you guys and post it on the community tab. And also, thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me produce this episode. If you want to link over to Todd's band, a link to his band's page is also in the description box below. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Monday, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.